project. In this video, we're going to code an inventory. In order to make an adventure game, we probably need uh, like treasures and stuff that you can actually find. So in this video, we're going to code an inventory step by step. The inventory is going to support things like stackable items like you see on the screen. Uh, let's get started. First, we'll code the inventory. Second, we'll code the view so you can actually see the icons for the inventory items. And then we'll integrate it with the game. If you came just to see the code for how do I code an inventory in a game, we'll get right to that. We'll start with that. I have Visual Studio Code open to our project. The code for this, the previous step and this step is in the description below. Let's go to our source folder and let's go to components and we'll create a new uh, file called inventory.py. Here are our stubs for our classes. So we have an item type, which is the actual type information. So say you have like maybe, a, for example, like a sword in your game. So that would be like the value of the sword, how many swords you can have like per slot in your inventory, etc. We have the item slot class, which holds a quantity and then a type of an item um, or nothing. It could be empty. And then we have our inventory class, which holds a number of slots. So we'll probably have like 20 slots, for example, in inventory or 30, however big it is. And then our last class is going to be the dropped item. So, you know, it'll hold basically an item on the ground so you can pick it up or or whatever. Our item type, I added a couple of things here. We're going to need them later. Um, we have our image path where it's going to load the uh, items. And then each item is going to have a icon of some sort. It's going to have a value, like how, how much that item is worth in game, uh, a weight, and then also a stack size, which is how much of that item can you hold in one uh, item slot. Take a closer look at this real quick. So uh, diamonds, for example, have a stack size of five. So you can hold five diamonds uh, in each slot. Next, we're going to code our item slot class, and all this is going to hold is a type and an amount. And we're actually just going to start it off with nothing and zero, because when we create a new inventory slot, we're just going to leave it blank at the beginning, and then later you can add an item to it. Okay, so don't feel intimidated by this. We're going to go over each one of the stubs in the inventory and what it does. I did this on purpose because... Uh, what you see here is common in a lot of games, and I hope that this code can help you to kind of understand or even code your own inventory. So we're gonna go over like adding items, stacking items, how do you get like the total value of everything in the inventory, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this is just how I do it. There's obviously probably other ways of doing it too as well, uh, but I want this to be sort of like a quite exhaustive resource that uh, has quite a bit of features to it. So. Um, we have our constructor creates a new inventory, takes in a capacity. The notify function is going to just notify uh, if something changed in the inventory. So it's useful for our UI later on. The add function is going to try to add an item to the inventory or a certain amount of that item. It's going to return any excess it wasn't able to add. So you might pick up, be able to pick up five items, but uh, you know you're not able to pick up uh, the remaining 10 that's on the ground or something. So it'll return 10. That way, 5 enters your inventory and 10 still remain on the ground. Um, the remove function is similar. It's going to try to remove a certain amount of uh, number in that inventory, and it's going to return whatever number it was able to remove. So let's say we're going to try to re remove 50 uh, gold from your inventory. Maybe somebody uh, steals from you in the game or something. Uh, and then, so the person steals 50 gold or something, but really you only have 35 gold in your inventory. So it'll it'll return 35. It's like, okay, we only found 35. Um, so, so this is, and this is because it could fail, right? You may try to remove 50 from an inventory, but you may not have it. So uh, we're gonna return whatever we were able to. The has function is very useful. It's gonna determine whether there is that much of an item in the inventory. So if you're coding a shop or, you know, hey, I need to, you know, this thing costs 10,000 gold or something, um, you know, you can run the has function first and just determine beforehand, okay, there is 10,000 of that item in the inventory. And then you can call the remove function after that. And then you can add the 
item that you purchase to the inventory. So the has function is useful if you if you absolutely need to make sure that the inventory has that amount of uh, item in there. Get index will get the slot number uh, where an item is. It'll return negative one if it doesn't find it. The string uh, method right here is really useful for basically converting the string, like the whole inventory into uh, a string, like into text. It's very useful for debugging. And if you're ever doing a complex class like this, uh, or any sort of type that you need to debug, I highly recommend that you actually do this. That way you can just print out the uh, inventory later and you can debug it as you as you go. Um, or even just see what's inside of it or whichever. Uh, get free slots returns the number of slots that are open in the inventory. Uh, is full, it just returns whether the inventory is full or not. These we're actually not even really gonna use per se, uh, but these are common operations that you probably would need, so we're gonna do those. And then the get weight and get value functions, it basically just sums up all of the weight of all the items in the inventory and then returns it, which is super useful in case you want to know like how much, you know, what's the val total value that you're holding right now of all the items or something. Quite a bit, let's get started. So our constructor first and foremost is going to set the capacity. We're going to keep track of how many slots were taken. And we're also going to initialize a new list for all of our slots then we'll just add an empty slot uh, for each item. And then we're also going to have a listener be none. Um, the listener is going to be like your view or, or anything later on that needs to know if the inventory changes. Second thing here, uh, we have a notify function. And basically what it's going to do is if we have a listener, it's going to call a refresh function on that listener. So um, anytime the inventory changes, we can call this notify function. The add function we're going to get back to. This is the this is one of the more complicated ones, so we'll uh, we'll skip that one for now. We're also going to skip the remove function. We'll get to that here in a second. I purposely skipped the add and remove function because the has function is way more kind of straightforward, and actually the functionality is going to be similar for these two. So basically, the has function is just going to have a number start out at zero, and then we just go through each one of the slots in the inventory we see, okay, is this a type of, let's say that we're looking for um, gold in our inventory. So we say, okay, does this slot have gold? Okay, no, does this slot have gold? Okay, yes. It, so then we add up however much gold that we have and uh, right here. And then if we found enough that we need, we return true. If we go through the whole inventory and we don't find enough, we're gonna return false. So it's either a yes or no, do we have you know, 10,000 gold in our inventory. We either have that much or we don't. This is gonna be a common pattern here for the add and remove, which we'll cover here uh, now. Jumping into our remove function, it's actually very similar. We're gonna go through as, so let's say that, okay, we're trying to get rid of 50 gold in our inventory. So we're gonna go from the first slot. Okay, is there gold here? Is there gold here? Is there gold here, Etc. And then uh, once we find a slot that has gold, we're going to start removing that gold from that slot. There are a couple cases that I want to kind of talk about. So it's it's possible that we uh, don't have enough in that slot. Let's say we're trying to find 50 gold and we hit a slot that has 35 gold. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll basically remove everything from that slot. And now we'll say, OK, we only have 15 gold left that we're looking for. So if that was the case, we're going to add up everything that we found, and then we're going to clear out the slot. The slot won't have anything in there. And then I just put the continue here just to show you that we're going to keep looping through this. Let's say that we're looking for 50 gold and we find a slot that has exactly 50 gold. Uh, this is what this function is going to do. We're going to add that to the amount, and then we're going to uh, clear out that slot. Just the same thing that we did uh, over here. But in this case, we're going to return that we actually uh, found uh, our thing. By the way, we're calling self.notify. We actually need to do that here too as well. So after everything, we're going to call self.notify. The last case that we have is if we hit an inventory slot, let's say that we're looking for 50 gold and we hit a slot with 200 gold, right? More than enough. We're simply going to add up what we found. And we're going to subtract what we were looking for. So now it's only 150 gold in that slot, but there's still gold in that slot. So we're not going to clear it out. 
we're going to call self.notify, and we're going to return found. Now, if we get to the end here, um, and we go through all the slots, and we only found, let's say, 35 gold in the entire inventory, all of the slots, we're just going to return that 35. We're going to return whatever we found. Let's go up a bit to our add function. Again, this is a lot of code. Uh, all the code is in the description below. So I'll go over it kind of briefly and, and look at that. But um, when we're adding to our inventory, we need to look and see if a slot is already there. So if it's a stackable item, like you saw those diamonds earlier, the diamonds are stackable. Um, we're trying to add a diamond to the inventory. And let's say that we have a stack that has three in it. We're going to want to add to that stack first before we add to an empty uh, slot. I know that's a little bit whatever, but um, if we don't do this, then you could end up with an inventory that just has like a whole bunch of stackable items all over the place. And it's just a complete mess. So this looks for a slot, like a slot that already has that item and it tries to fit as much of that item in as possible. So we're going to look for that item. We're going to similar to what we did. OK, we're trying to look for diamonds. And then uh, if we found a slot with diamond, diamonds, we're gonna try to add as much as we can uh, to that slot. Um, so yeah, basically what we're gonna do is we'll just, yeah, we'll add it to the slot and then uh, we'll remove however much we're still trying to add. So let's say that we're, we're trying to add like 20 diamonds to our inventory and we find a slot with four. So we're gonna add one to that slot. So now we still need to add 19 right? But we have this slot that now has five and now it's like fully stacked, right? Nice and clean. Um, it, now let's say that we, let's say that we were trying to add two diamonds to the inventory and we find a inventory slot with one diamond. So we'll add three. So that slot will become three and then we've added it successfully. And we're just going to return from here. So after we've looked for all of the slots, we're just going to go through and um, add them to our empty slots. So, OK, we've confirmed that there's no more slots that have diamonds in them or they're all full. So now we're going to start adding to our empty slots. So if the slot type is none, then we're now going to set the slot type to that. And we're going to try to stack as much as we can into that slot. Um, let's say that we're adding, you know, four diamonds right to an empty slot well that's enough because diamonds can have five in a slot so we'll just uh we'll return you know okay we're good to go it, you know we'll just return uh zero that there's no excess um if for some reason we weren't able to do that we're going to return self uh we're basically going to just try to add to the inventory again so we'll return self.add and we can actually just call this recursively to say hey just try it again just try to add to the inventory again not not crazy efficient um but you know when you're trying to add a couple items to an inventory it really is kind of you know trivial at this point so it doesn't okay that is the add function is probably the most complicated and feel free if you want to take a look more at the code again it's in the description below um but that those are the biggest ones here git index is really straightforward we're just looking through each slot Okay, is this an apple? Is this an apple? Is this an apple? And if we find an apple, okay, let's return where it was, right? The look like the slot that it was. Oh, it's in slot three, or the first one that we found is in slot five, or whatever. If we don't find it, like if we loop through the whole inventory and we don't find it, we'll return negative one. Our string function is going to start off with an empty string, just empty text. We're going to loop through each slot, and we're basically going to create a string representation of the name and the amount of that item. So uh, yeah, as long as it's not none. If it is none, we're just going to say empty slot. This isn't like a perfect way of doing this, but this is good enough for debugging the inventory later. I want to show you what this looks like. So if you come in here to the thing, it's just going to print a bunch of empty slots. And if there is, for example, like a diamond or something in there, then it's going to print like a diamond instead of empty slot. So again, it's not like perfect or anything, but this is good enough for if you're just trying to debug this inventory and you're trying to see what's going on. Next, we're going to basically get all the free slots. So we're just going through each slot. If it's free, we're going to plus one, and then not return that. We're going to return i uh, to do that. We can return is full just by calling this previous function and checking if it's zero. 
get weight and get value are pretty identical. So we'll just come in here and loop through each one of the slots. We're going to return the item dot weight times the amount that you have. So let's say that like diamonds, for example, are like one pound. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, and then let's say that we have five of them. So it'd just be like five pounds in this slot, five pounds in this slot, et cetera, et cetera. And then it would add them all up and uh, return what you got. Same thing for the value. It's actually the same exact code, uh, except we just use value instead. And we're done. That is the inventory class in a nutshell. Uh, so that's all the functionality of you know, a, an inventory that has stackable items and weight and value uh, in a video game. Again, this is this code's not perfect, uh, but I hope this gets you kind of started. Um, so going on from this point, we're going to now talk about uh, integrating this with the game. The dropped item class is going to be a trigger. So up here, we're going to come in here, we're going to say trigger. And then um, it's also going to basically initialize a trigger uh, similar to our other video that we did on moving into other areas um, where we uh, created the teleporter class to move to this area or that area. Um, we have a Lambda, so some kind of code that is called when you run into it. So every single time that we're running over a diamond, for example, uh, the code gets called. It's going to call a function called pickup, which will actually do this functionality. So our code is going to call this function. And we're also going to extend the uh, trigger class to have an other that uh, like a parameter that's taken in uh, for whatever other object actually hit that trigger. Um, we'll get into that here in a second when we integrate all this. But um, basically, all we're going to do is we're going to check and see uh, if the other object that hit us is a player. And if that's the case, we're going to add to the player's inventory. Um, and then we'll come in here and we'll do, we'll basically just subtract the quantity from the dropped item. And then if we were able to pick up everything, then we're just going to destroy the uh, dropped item because it's now it's in the inventory. Uh, now it's in the player's class. So if the player was only able to pick up like five of the 15 diamonds, we're now instead going to have a, uh, an item that only has 10 now, and it's just gonna stay on the floor. Those 10 diamonds that we were not able to pick up are gonna stay on the floor. We're not gonna destroy the item. But if we were able to pick up everything, then, oh, the as you saw, the diamonds disappeared, right? They sort of were removed from the game, right? Because they ended up now in your inventory. Now that we've done this, let's go ahead and code our uh, inventory view class. Go into components and let's create a new folder called UI. We're probably going to put the button and label in here in a second, but we'll just leave it for this video. Go ahead and create a new uh, file. We'll do inventory view.py. Inventory views are going to be a group of UI elements. Um, we're going to create a window class for an in game window. It's not going to exactly look like a window, but uh, I think a window can be a group of UI elements that are all together. Here is the window class code. And uh, later, and probably another video, we're going to actually draw like a background to the uh, window, but we can get a little bit of that set up before. Um, for now, this is the most important part is the self dot items. It's going to hold a bunch of items like labels and sprites and, and such that are part of that window. For example, like all of the slots of the inventory. We also have a function for creating a window too as well. That's super helpful. And it just creates an entity alongside the window. Go ahead and go into your area.py file. We're going to add a remove entity function to our area.py uh, file. It's going to remove it from the entities. And it's also going to, um, so a component can optionally have a breakdown function which will basically free up any resources inside of it. This will allow us to uh, destroy the sprite or make the sprite disappear. Um, and it'll make the code a lot simpler later on because all we have to do is implement a breakdown method uh, on that class. And it'll this will literally just take care of the list. We're actually seeing if this component has a breakdown function. This is referred to as um, meta programming, 
uh, where you actually sort of are looking at the class itself and seeing like, does this have a breakdown function? Or in other words, like does this object right here have an attribute called breakdown and is it callable? Like, can you call it as a function? Um, there's lots of these different kinds of functions in Python and they're really powerful and you can do a lot of really cool things with them. Okay, let's go to our inventory view. So let's jump into inventory view and we'll go from there. We're gonna import the following just for the sake of simplicity, feel free to add that. And then we're gonna, um, these are different properties about the inventory view. Items per row is how many inventory slots are lined up on each row. The padding size is how many empty pixels are there um, throughout the entire view. Padding is everywhere. Uh, if you look at, for example, like these tabs, there's a bunch of pixels uh, just empty around these. And then the, uh, the gap size is how much pic empty pixels are in between each slot. And then the item size is just how big each one of the inventory slots is. We're going to keep track of these here because I think these are appropriate global values and you can quickly edit them later on to, um, you know, to your liking. The stubs for this inventory view, the stubbed out methods are the following. So this creates a new inventory view. We're going to take in an inventory as a reference. If you know model view controller, this is, I guess is more like a controller. It's not exactly like a view because uh, it knows about the uh, inventory model, the sort of data, the logic behind the program. It's also going to take in a empty slot image that it can use. And it's just going to default to this, but you can change it later as you like. The render function is going to create all of the UI elements to display the inventory. And we have a clear function, which destroys all the UI elements. The refresh function, which I'm just going to actually do here, is just going to call clear, and then it's going to call render. This is not a super efficient way of doing it, but I mean, quite frankly, it's fast enough for these purposes, right? Because you're just sort of creating 20 slots again, and I think that's fine for every time that you pick up an item or something. First part of this is we're just going to uh, set the inventory and the slot image, and we're also going to import the engine. Here's how we get the uh, size of the whole window. <laughs> so um, let me show you what's going on here. So if you take a good look at the inventory slots over here, we need to add up the empty space that we have between them. See how they're not exactly on the edge? Like there's a little bit of empty space. So we need to add that up. There's going to be empty space on both sides. And then we're going to add up the size of each slot. So we have like five, for example, and five times 32, whatever that is. And then if you look in between each one of them, there are four gaps in between them, right? So it's four times whatever the gap size is. So, you know, two times, you know, we have two paddings, right? So padding left, add that. Then we're going to add five of these, you know, whatever the slot, uh, slot size is. And then we're going to add four gaps, whatever that is. And then we're going to add just another padding at the end. And voila, we have the whole size of that. We're also going to do this vertically too as well. So we know how many items are per row, like we know how many columns we have, but we don't know how many rows we have. You might have noticed earlier we had uh, 20, so we had, because of that, we had five columns and four rows. Well, we need to figure out how many rows we have. So we're going to basically just get however many slots we have divided by the items per row. Uh, we're going to get the ceiling of that just so that we can round up we're doing the same exact algorithm uh, for up and down, as I kind of mentioned earlier. So, okay, and now we have everything to create it. Uh, I get the camera just to put it over to the right, as you saw. Um, that way it's in the, the top right corner. So we just get however big the uh, camera is and then minus the width of the uh, the window itself, the of the inventory window. And then we create a window and uh, we have a bunch of um, sprites for all of the containers and then the actual sprites themselves for each one of the items that we're going to just keep track of. Finally, we're going to set for this in, uh, thing, we're going to set the uh, listener uh, to ourselves. So we're going to listen for any sort of inventory, um, you know, th uh, things that change with that. It's actually going to call this refresh. So this is our refresh method that the inventory is going to let us know, OK, hey, something changed with the inventory. All it's going to do is clear it out, and it's going to redraw everything. Uh, the clear function is a lot more straightforward. 
We're going to have sprites and labels. The reason being is the fact that some items are stackable, and you might have noticed that there's a number by every single item. Well, that's a text field, and we can actually just use our label class uh, that we did earlier for that. So if we have any sprites or we have any labels, we're just going to call breakdown on those. So the key functionality of rendering everything, this is not the complete code, but we're just going to uh, basically be on a row and a column. And then for every single one of the slots in the inventory, we're just going to draw that slot. We'll figure out the X and Y position of where that slot is a similar equation to what we did earlier. So um, we're just basically going to uh, add a slot and the gap size uh, and then multiply it with whatever column that we're currently on. So this will actually be zero for the first one. So it's just going to put it at the very top left. Um, but this will kind of space them out um, as they go. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll do it relative to the window. So wherever the window is. Um, and then we're just going to add the padding size. We're actually going to get the container sprite, which all that is is the empty uh, slot. So like the little box that the item is going to be in. And then we're just going to add that to the window. OK, this is the key of actually drawing an item here. So if we have an item, if the slot type is not none, we're going to come in here. We're going to uh, do a sprite for the actual item itself. Um, again, creating an entity for that. And we print the, yeah, we do that. And then uh, we're also going to uh, create uh, a label for that too as well. And uh, we'll go from there. We'll create the label if the stack size is greater than one. Again, I know this is a lot of details and stuff. All the code is in the description below. Uh, but yeah, if it's a stackable item, we also want to draw a number with it. Um, I chose yellow is a decent color for kind of contrasting with a lot of things. Uh, but you can really pick whatever color that you want. And I think size 30 uh text is, is pretty good this string this wraps around this is a really long i should probably make this uh yeah there we go that's a little bit cleaner so that you can kind of see it perfect okay and then we're just going to add that label if we had it and then we're also going to add the sprite and then we're going to go up by one column last thing we're going to do let's make this line up with the uh four here uh, we're going to come in here. We're going to do a if statement to check and see uh, if uh, we've gone. So, OK, one, two, three, four, five. We're at the end. We're going to reset the column that we're on. So we're going to go back to the left and then we're going to go down one. So uh, think about reading a book, right? You go all the way to the end of the line and then you go to the next line go all the way to the end. Next line. And congratulations, we're done with the inventory view. That was quite a bit of code. So thank you for sticking with me on this. So we now have a inventory class coded, good to go. We have an inventory view coded, again, quite a bit of code. Um, and I'm actually a little concerned because we haven't really tested this, um, you know, from going in. But what you can do while you're developing this is if for some reason the inventory view has issues, you can always use the, uh, the string of the inventory and you know just basically for each one of these functions like if you want to come in here and uh when you're adding it you can come in here and print maybe we'll do that like in the notify function you could just come in and like uh print self and then it'll just anytime the inventory changes it'll do that you don't have to do this but just if you're running into issues this is a good way of uh at least test the inventory class first that it works and then otherwise you can just kind of go from there. With that being said, let's go ahead and actually create an item here. So we're going to jump into our data and we're going to go to new file and we'll do uh, item types.py. Item types and uh, we're just going to have one item, which is a diamond. Uh, this is the image that it takes. And then we have we can stack five of them in a single slot. You can add more item types as you want to this list. Also to our objects, right, our, our, all of our entity factories, we're going to come in here, we're going to add our inventory, uh, as well as our dropped item to these. We're also going to add a new inventory, uh, a new factory for a dropped item, which then you can just add uh, whatever kind of item that you want to uh, your levels in your uh, map data files. One more thing too, there's actually a bug with this from the last video, if you go, or well, from two videos ago, three videos maybe, it's been a lot, a while. Um, just do uh, teleporter left.png. This one, uh, there's like two of them that had uh, rights, but yeah, just wanna let you know. 
One other thing too is that uh, in our teleporter.py, right where the lambda is, add other. So, and we're actually not going to do anything with it, but all triggers are now going to ha know what triggered them. So they're going to have a uh, reference to the other object. Next, we're going to add breakdown functions so we can break down our sprites. So let's go into sprite.py. Instead of this delete function, we're going to have a breakdown function. And uh, also, too, we're going to do from core engine import engine. And yeah, we'll just come in here and we'll uh, remove the engine. Go into your player.py. And at the very, very end is actually our trigger code. Inside of here, we're going to come in here and say uh, set. We're going to say self.entity. And we'll go from there. So now any trigger is going to have a reference to that player or the other thing that triggered it. Let's make some modifications to our physics. Go ahead and jump into, uh, let's go to components and then we'll go to physics.py. Inside of here, we can actually dictate the uh, breaking down of these by our uh, by adding a, we can uh, now break these down. So let's come in here and we'll add to our trigger class, we're gonna add a breakdown function that's just going to remove itself from the triggers. The body class is also going to have an equivalent one that's going to remove it from the bodies as well. So now we can just utilize this breakdown function to uh, do that. Uh, in testing this, uh, I found that the labels uh, were just, it was kind of difficult uh, to print them against the inventory icons. And so I actually added uh, shadows to the all the text in the game. Uh, go into label.py and I want to show you how to do that. Inside of label.py, what we're going to do is we're going to add a uh, shadow as well. And basically, all you do is re-render the text, but with uh, basically a dark color, for example. So um, it's the same exact text and same exact settings, but you just render it again with that. And we create a shadow surface that way. Next, in our draw function, we're going to come in here and we're going to draw the shadow surface first. And I want you to note something. The position of where it's being drawn will be added by one. You can actually experiment with this. If you want to do two on these, uh, you'll get a like kind of a stronger shadow. Uh, but yeah, the uh, anyway, we're going to render the shadow this way. Just make sure that this is first and then you draw your actual text over it. We're also going to add a breakdown function to uh, this uh, thing here, this label, and we'll go from there. The game now has in its assets a diamond.png. This will be included in the uh, description below with the source code. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and just add diamond.png to your images file. One other one too is the inventory slot.png. Go ahead and also do that as well. So these will be linked in the description below. Last thing that we're going to do is we're going to come into our player and actually add the inventory. The inventory is not going to be a component. The reason being is the fact that when you travel to different areas, uh, we want for the inventory to sort of stay put. If you make it a component, it's going to destroy the inventory every single time that you go to like a different area or that the player is recreated somehow. Um, I think it's just uh, for now, I actually think it's appropriate that we can have this. So I Let's go ahead and we're going to import our inventory up here. Next, we'll come in here and we'll create a new inventory and check this out. We can just press 20 in here to say, hey, just create an inventory with 20 slots. Next, we'll come in here and we'll add a new inventory uh, view here. I named it inventory window, but you can name it whichever. Let's go ahead and test it. And we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and click new game. So take a look. We should actually have 20 slots, but we only have five. I uh, apologize for the inconvenience. Let me show you that is real quick. In your inventory view class, find the render function. And inside of that, we're going to indent these lines right here by one. So now it will actually line up with this instead. Um, I apologize for the error. This was quite a bit of code. Uh, go ahead and jump into main.py and we'll run it. And there we go, we have uh, our inventory slots. Now we need some items to pick up. So let's go ahead and add those. Go ahead and jump into your uh, content and we'll do maps. And then we'll maybe just add this to the forest. Like we did with other videos, we can add a couple different uh, entities here. So this is the, uh, the type of entity itself. So seven is a 
If you go back to your uh, objects, you can look at seven is actually a dropped item. So then we'll come into forest. Uh, this is the position of where it is. And then this is the, uh, the next one is the item that it is, like what kind it is in your, uh, your item types. And then um, the last one is how much this, there is there. Again, this is a, it kind of, you might be thinking, oh, this is <laughs> mercy. Like what, you know, we're working with data. Um, I think we will code a level editor in a future video uh, for this, but I actually think it's good to get a little bit familiar with working with uh, game data like this, um, because it'll just get you more rehearsed with, uh, you know, and thinking about how can I code and structure the data for other features that you're going to add to your game later. Um, so I actually think this is good practice to kind of work with it like this. Um, but obviously there's an ele more elegant and easier way solution later on um, that you can do. Let's test this. Let's go to main.py and we'll run it and we'll go to new game and we have two. Okay, perfect. We have three diamonds. Okay, moment of truth. And we picked it up. Look at that. And it went into our inventory and it disappeared. Okay. And there we go. And look at that. That one had five and it actually stacked. Mercy, this has been a long video. <laughs> so, um, you know, an inventory is not an easy thing to code. And uh, I hope that this video, you know, we've covered it uh, quite a bit of features with the inventory class, and it's been a lot of work to kind of get this uh, going. So if you follow, you know, for following this far along, really give yourself a pat on the back, like, you know, really good job. Excellent. I hope that this video helps you code an inventory. Your inventory in your game may not be as complex. You might not have stackable items. You might not have all this sort of logic that we had to do. But I hope this gives you a basis. And feel free to take a look at the source code uh, in the uh, description below for further details. Um, I think that this is a great place to wrap it up in, uh, for this video. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope that this benefits you. And I hope you have a good rest of your day.